All right, I'm going to get started now. So I'm going to introduce Selenium, uh, talk about how to write Selenium tests using Perl, and mainly walk through uh, some of the problems that I had when I first started doing Selenium testing at work. All right, so Selenium is a tool for testing your website. It's written in Java, and it's very similar in concept to test mechanize. Um, so you can write code which will interact with your web application. You can fill out forms, click links. Um, but the difference is Selenium is going to test your application at the browser level. So it's actually going to load your web application in a browser in Internet Explorer or Safari or Firefox and interact with it using JavaScript. So this is great because you're going to be able to, your tests are going to be much closer to the actual user experience. Um, you get to exercise your JavaScript, and of course you can test your site in multiple browsers. All right, so first thing I want to talk about is the Selenium IDE, which is a Firefox plugin. The idea with this is to have something very simple, which uh, even designers can create tests uh, using, using the IDE. So it's a point-and-click interface. Um, you can, it even has a feature where you can record your actions in the browser and then replay them back as tests. So very quickly, let me uh, demo this. All right, so I, got, I have a fake Plaque application here called Oogle, which is supposed to be like uh, Google's search engine. And this is the Selenium IDE. And I've already written a very brief test suite. So each one of these here is a test. And if I double click on, double -click on one, it'll turn green because it passed, and if it fails, it'll turn red. So you can see pretty quickly just by looking at it what's going on. So the first, the first test, we're opening up the index page. The second one, we're going to type cat pictures into the search box. And uh, we're going to submit our search and get our results. And now I'm going to check that I've got a total of two bajillion results. And then I'm going to go to the second page of results, and again, Check just to make sure the total results is consistent. OK. One thing to point out, the source code, if you save this test, is HTML. So this is, uh, there's just a table here. And each row in the table is, uh, corresponds to a test. So you've got your command target value. Um, when you're interacting with elements on the page, these are the Selenium actions. When you're interacting with elements on the page, these uh, are identified either by ID from your HTML or uh, using CSS selectors. Or the third way is to use XPath, which is the XML way of identifying an elephant element, not an elephant, on the page. Um, and I actually use XPath for all my tests because it is slightly more powerful than CSS. Um, you, can, you can select the third element from a list, for example, the, the nth element from a list. All right, so th that's the IDE. It's very simple to use, and uh, designers uh, can, can create tests. And we used that at work for a few years, and it went pretty well. Uh, but eventually, we decided that there were, there were quite a few problems with this. So I'm going to talk about those. Um, the first one we had was unreliable tests. We had tests that would pass maybe 9 out of 10 times. And I'll get into more detail on this in a minute. Uh, second issue, it's not Perl. Uh, it's this Selenese HTML stuff, which is not very powerful, not very flexible. Um, and, and, but ultimately, we, we're Perl developers. We're good at Perl. Uh, so we wanted, we wanted something in Perl. Uh, more specifically, one of the problems we had is that it was difficult to, to use libraries with Selenium. Um, and lastly, uh, just a lack of automation. You have to hit that play button on the IDE, which I forgot to demo. But um, yeah, there's just a play button here. And uh, it'll run all the tests for you, and they'll all turn green. OK, so. Um, these are the problems that I was kind of asked to look into at work, and so I'm going to talk about how I resolve them. The first one, I'm just going to demo very quickly. So you saw me play it on slow. 
And this is actually not a Perl issue, it's, but it's such a common issue that people have when they first start using Selenium that I wanted to, to mention it. So if, if you put the speed up to fast, you'll see we get a failure right away. Um, and the issue is here is that uh, Selenium is going so fast that we're, we're not actually giving, given time for the page to load. So when it looks for this string, two bajillion results, um, the page hasn't loaded yet. All right. So what can we do about this? Well, Selenium has several wait commands. So if you use this command, it will actually wait for the page to load before continuing. The problem is, if you're using Ajax in your requests, um, this wait command doesn't know anything about Ajax. It doesn't know when, it, when it's completed. So, um, and we, we figured that out, but what we ended up using was uh, a pause command, a sleep command, and, um, but the problem is that doesn't work reliably. So if you have a lot of disk I.O., if you have slow not network connectivity, then your tests will sometimes fail, um, and it's not repeatable, and that's really frustrating. So the correct solution for this is I messed it all up. All right, so this Results. Okay, so now the tests are going to proceed until we get to this wait f uh, for text present command, and at that point, uh, it'll just wait for the page to load and wait until uh, 30 seconds until it sees the text results. So hopefully this will work. Right. All right. So that's one of our, out of our four problems down. Uh, the next one should be easy, because it's uh, we just look in CPAN, and there's already a, a library there called Test Selenium, and this is a great library. I'd, I'll recommend it, uh, and I'll talk ab about how to use it. Uh, so if you want to write a Selenium test in Perl, there's four basic ingredients. You're going to have a Perl test, which is going to talk to your Selenium server. The Selenium server is going to start up a web browser. The web browser will load your website and interact with it using JavaScript and send the results back to your Perl test. So here's an example Perl test. That doesn't make a difference. OK. Um, so I'm using test most. Um, the first thing we're going to do is create a Selenium object. And I'm going to talk about these parameters. So we're going to be talking to the Selenium server at uh, the local host on port 444 and running our tests in Firefox against the application at this location. So now that we've got our Selenium server, um, we're going to open up the index page, wait for the page to load, search for cat pictures, uh, hit the search button, and then make sure we got the correct number of results. So you'll see we have open, wait, type, click. These are all from the Selenium API made available to us as Perl methods. So um, the difference here is the underscore OK at the end, which indicates that it's a test. So when we run it uh, using the uh, you'll see it in the tap output. So uh, let me just demo that real quick. All right, so this, this is going to fail because I don't have the Selenium server running. And to, to run the Selenium server, you go to the, their website, download the jar file. It's just java-jar. Now it's going to open up two browser windows when I run proof here. And the tests actually run so quickly you don't see anything. But they all passed. Um, but it's a problem if you're debugging, because it goes by so quickly you have no idea what happened. So of course you want to put in some sleep statements. Uh, something like this. All right, so two windows. One browser window has all the commands 
that are executing, and the other one is your web application. And you can actually watch as it, as it uh, interacts with your web application. All right, so we're halfway done, uh, except I have to add another problem because I, I think now the issue is that designers don't know Perl, so it's going to be a bit more difficult for them to write tests. All right, so, but we're going to forget about that for, for a minute and just move on to this problem of libraries because now we have, we have our test in Perl, so this issue of libraries should be very simple. So I'm going to take this test, which we just looked at, and I don't like this part. I don't, I don't want to repeat this in every test file. So of course, I'm going to use some inheritance. I'm going to extend the Selenium library and create my own package. So that'll look like this when we're done. So I have a my Selenium package. So how are we going to implement that? Well, I wanted to use Moose uh, because I think Moose is great. Um, so that's, that's pretty simple, right? That's, that's how we do it with Moose. Um, unfortunately, Moose can't extend non-Moose libraries, and of course, Test Selenium is, is a non-Moose library. Fortunately, Moose X non-Moose can. Uh, this is a great module. All it is is one extra line of code, and uh, it works uh, pretty much every time, uh, except in one case, which is when the parent library uses autoload. Uh, and of course, Test Selenium does use autoload. Fortunately, uh, I, wrote a, I wrote a module called Test Selenium More, uh, which does several things, uh, but probably the most important one is that it, it allows you to use Moose uh, and inheritance on the Selenium object. So if you're using More, we can, we can use Moose and, uh, and get all of our Selenium API from test WW Selenium. So now I've got all my configuration stuff in here and my, my, my package, and so now this is going to work out. But let's take it a step further. And um, I, I want to test, I want to log in as Bob and then test that we still get this correct number of results as a logged in user. So uh, the thing to note here is that the login OK method is not part of the Selenium API. So we're going to have to write that method ourselves. So I'm going to put that into the, this package, and it, and it looks like this. So here's my method. Uh, we're going to open up the login page, type in the username, type in the password, click login. And, and that, that's it. So, uh, but uh, the great thing is, since we're using Moose, we can go ahead and just put that in a role, because I'm sure we have other authentication stuff, um, login, log out, change password, whatever, uh, maybe a payments role, any, anything you want. Uh, OK, so we're almost done. Uh, designers can't easily write tests. This is a problem that I struggled with. Um, so my initial thought was maybe I could come up with something where they don't need to, to really learn Perl, or I could decrease the amount of syntax that they have to know. Um, and I tried a few crazier things, but ultimately I came back to uh, just method chaining. Uh, so this is available in Test Selenium More, and it looks like this. Um, I'm not sure this really makes it any easier for designers, but the advantage I found from this was accidental, because I became really obsessive, compulsive about lining up all my arrows, and I didn't want to break the chain. So I ended up leaving out any assignments or loops or um, subroutines, and it turns out that my .t files are really simple. It's just you know, a list of commands in order, and um, it turns out designers, our designers, handle this pretty well. Uh, they're already familiar with the Selenium API, um, and they know how to program. They use JavaScript. They, they write code in JavaScript, so it's not much of a stretch for them to look at this and edit this. Anything complicated uh, ends up as a, as a method like this, and that's when the Perl developers get involved, and, um, and we write that code. So I'm going to go ahead and gray this out, but not cross it off, because I don't think I really solved the problem. It's just that um, I'm done thinking about it. <laughs> and um, uh, anytime you put your tests into Perl, 
ultimately your Perl developers are going to be responsible for, for most of that. Last issue, very quickly, lack of automation. Um, this is probably actually the most important one. If, if you're not doing this, you're not going to find things before you go to production. Um, we use Jenkins. Uh, it's written in Java. It's basically cron with a web interface and some features. Uh, it's community acceptance. And um, that's how I solve those problems. So uh, that's the end of my talk. Any questions? <laughs> questions? Sure. Uh, that's actually not something that we're doing. Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I, you basically, you're going to have to write some code, and uh, I, I don't have a great answer for you. There is a website where they've they sell sell it to you as a service, um, but beyond that, I, I don't have a great answer for you. Anybody else? Hi. Yes, you. Sorry, say that again? Is there a Selenium plugin for Jenkins? Uh, yeah, yeah. There is a, there's a plugin to translate between your Perl tests um, to send that tap output to, to uh, Jenkins. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's one of the great advantages of, of we had from putting it into Perl was because at that point we could automate it. I forgot to mention that. Thanks. Yes. No, I did not try that. <laughs> Sorry. That's exactly right. It, it's it's not really built for handling like small CSS incompatibilities. Um, I think you could build something on top of that, but it's just not easy to do. I mean, you'd have to probably you'd probably want to do screenshots and then comparisons. Um, it, it's I, I think it's not really the main point. Yes, screen share. Um, yeah. Well, actually, I, I would say. Um, that it, it, probably the last three points on this slide, um, I, I'm not sure that I would prefer it over Mechanize, uh, but I think it's a useful additional tool. So um, it does actually run your JavaScript, so I, I think that's a pretty big one. Uh, and of course, the, you can do, the, do it in multiple browsers uh, if you put in the effort. And I, just to go back to that real quick, um, Right here, you can specify the browser. So yeah, you'll have to, you have to write some of your own code, but um, you set up a server. You know, you'd probably have three different computers. You'd set up a server for Firefox, Internet Explorer. But there's not really an out of the, I, I don't have an out of the box solution. Um, but you can set your browser here. Any, yes? Um, let's see. Well, we, I think we created it in Ubuntu, well, a Debian package um, to kind of set this stuff up. But, but yeah, I think we wrote our own init scripts. Um, so yeah, there is a bit of sysadmin sys work to do there. Um, you have to set up to run it without, um, we have it set up to run headless, so there's no actual browser. Um, 
you have to use the X, XVFB, the X virtual frame buffer program. Um, actually, if you look at the, the pod for this module, um, it, it talks a bit about that, uh, how, how to run it headless. Um, I think we actually run it so that the browser starts up again completely clean for each, each, uh, each run. Um, I know you can reuse the browser. That's an option. Um, other than that, I mean, the code on the server side, we, we, you know, we made the code server side nice so that if it dies in the middle, that's not a, that's not a problem. OK. Um, Last question. JavaScript. It's it's interacting with it using JavaScript. So they, I think they all have. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm. I think they all have their own APIs, so you can interact. Uh, so Selenium interacts with them using JavaScript, each one. So uh, unfortunately, that's all I have time for. If you could uh, come up, we can talk later. Thank you very much.